7 o'clock on Wednesday, February 13th, I would like to call the February meeting of the Sutton Police Department Building Committee to order. Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our January 2nd, 2019 meeting. If you could all just take a moment to review those, please. Motion we approve the minutes from January 2nd, 2019. Second that. All those in favor and to keep by saying aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Thank you, Chief. Yeah, I wasn't here for the last meeting. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, that, that was discussed already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next on our agenda um, will be what everybody is excited about is an update on the building. Uh, we're very excited to hear about all of the ins and outs of the ongoing contractor items. So if you could please, how, how Neil. Much, how much time do you have? Uh, a couple yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time. We are uh, progressing along well inside the building. Um, finishes are, are really coming very close to wrapping up. Um, I would consider at this point in time we're really in sort of the odds and ends phase. Um, the last of the doors were delivered today. I think there's six left to be installed. Um, they're really in the process of doing all of the other door hardware and electronic locks and associated programming that goes into the building. Um, they're in the process of starting up all of the HVAC equipment and plumbing equipment um, throughout the building. Um, as we had informed the committee back in January, um, there was an issue we had some radon in the water. Um, since we have last met, we have um, ordered and received um, a radon bubbling system um, that's currently being installed inside the mechanical room. Oh, so it did arrive. It did arrive. It arrived Excellent. earlier this week. Um, and right now the contractors are planning to work Monday um, to uh, do the installation work inside the station. So with any luck, um, we will have uh, potable water inside the station, hopefully by the end of next week after it's installed and tested. <coughs> um, very aggressive, but that's what we're shooting for. Um, on the outside of the building, we're down to really, um, I would say probably about two weeks worth of miscellaneous trim and accessories outside of the building. Um, that's work that can be done in cold weather. Um, so it, it's not going to affect, uh, should not affect occupancy or the turnover of the building. Um, again, working through uh, fire alarm systems, uh, the pump, the fire pump room has been installed and all systems are energized. We had a shutdown um, Monday and Tuesday to run electrical power out there right out of the transformer. Um, so that work has been completed and... Um, they're in the process again of, of finalizing the fire alarm system and getting that up and running. Um, from here looking forward, I would suggest that they will be in testing and startup mode from now probably through the first week in March and then uh, commensurate with the communications vendor who is installing all of the communications equipment and the consoles in the dispatch room. Um, we should have the communication systems up and running hopefully by the end of the first week in March, second week in March, and then we'll be looking for occupancy very shortly thereafter um, with the town and the building inspector. So we're, we're, we're really pushing hard that the building is occupiable and ready for the department to move in by mid-March. I, I would just add that a, a couple of miscellaneous things uh, that'll be <coughs> being completed by the contractor post-occupancy, one of which we've discussed a few times before, which is the landscaping is gonna happen mm -hmm sometime in April when, <coughs> when the ground thaws out. Um, also, due to the cold weather installation of a lot of the trims and things like that, none of that is going to be painted until later in the spring. We don't want to paint that in cold weather, so they'll be coming back and, and touching all that up. So the, you'll, you'll see after the building is up that there'll probably be another lift on site for a, for a week or two while they go and tidy up some of those odds and ends that they weren't able to complete because of the weather. And Neil, what is yes. the furniture delivery date? 
Right now, the uh, furniture is scheduled to come in right after the February recess. So I think it's the 25th, yeah. maybe, yeah. of it's the last full week in um, in February. Okay. Dispatch councils are in dispatch currently. Okay. Chief, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, just to echo what Matt and Neil have said. Come along nice. <coughs> it seems like there's a lot of little things yes. to complete. So, is the painting finished? No. Interior painting? No. Nope. Aren't you getting excited? Yes. Yeah, I've been there. Was there earlier today? Starting to really take Coming shape. Along. Looks nice. Pretty much lives down there now. Yeah. <laughs> is there a cot there? Yeah. <laughs> so. I share it with. Michelle. The I share it with the painter. <laughs> <laughs> There's four permanent in installations of beds down in the basement. So, yeah. so if we were to try and forecast out a date for a ribbon cutting ceremony for the station, okay. being practical. So, so two two lines of reasoning. Um, well, that's two more than our, some of our previous managers have had. So one is we could try to do something prior to occupancy have the full building open to the public and whatnot for an open house prior to the occupancy. Um, and the second line of reasoning is to have the station opened after occupancy, understanding that there would be a very few and limited number of areas that would not be open to the public at that point in time. So it's really up to the committee. If I, was a, if I were to guess now, I would say a safe bet would be probably the end of March, and that would give everybody an opportunity to get in and get settled. Um, if the preference was to do it before the station was opened, I would say sometime closer to mid-March, and that would be more ceremonial in nature. So it's, it's really up to the committee, that, I think. <coughs> I, don't, I don't have a feeling either way. I, I think it would probably maybe be a little advantageous if, People could go in there when it's not occupied by us, you know, and just kind of look around at everything. And yeah. when there's no evidence and yeah. the phones aren't ringing yeah. and Someone screaming in the basement. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, no, that's a Netflix so movie. You're confused. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I've given we've given a number of tours already. So I mean, mm -hmm. so there's people that have been in there and we've showed them around and whatnot. So How, can I ask, do Please. you? Um, what have other towns done? You've worked on a number of we've projects. Done, we've done it both ways, Jim. Some some communities prefer that they get the finished touch, so the the officers have all moved in, desks are are full, bookshelves are full. They really get the full flavor of what the station is going to look like under operating conditions, and others have made it like uh, it's pristine, it's brand new, it isn't moved into yet and they're escorted through the entire station. So we've really done it very successfully both ways. It really, I think, depends on the community and their preferences. <coughs> Tim, anyone? More thoughts? Any thoughts? I'd really enjoy some feedback because... The weather you know. might be a factor. You know, later in March, the weather may not be as iffy as mid-March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know my feet were frozen at the... Uh, the, oh, the, the, the groundbreaking. Ground the ground so. oh, yeah, that was that a cold was day. Cold that, day. <laughs> that was a cold day. <laughs> yeah, Thank God Jesse had a whole speech. Um, really, any other thought? That's a great point. Do you have any thoughts, Nick, on that? I think it will be better after they moved in because if you have a taxpayer going through the building and they see something wrong, then there's no nothing covering it up. <coughs> And, and to be practical, Neil, if we had areas that were cordoned off, if you will, it would be evidence, it would be the cells, what else would we have that would, would not be available to a taxpayer? I would suggest most likely the quartermaster room yep. that has the munitions and mm -hmm. arms, the armory. Good point. Um, All of that back of house mechanical and comm equipment areas. <clears throat> That's uh, The rest of the station is really pretty public. I mean, the locker rooms would be open. Um, Lisa's, Lisa's locker room would be open. Um, the exercise room, I don't know if there'd be any equipment in there at, at that time. Yeah. So, But those rooms that he mentioned are just, I mean, 
the not really the glorified closet, so it's <coughs> there's nothing real fancy in there for anyone to look at. So would as a committee would the suggestion be to do it perhaps shoot for the last week of March as an open station, mm -hmm. open and occupied? I was thinking about people coming through with the offices open. Oh, he do. loves it. Yeah, I think it'd be easier. Okay. You know what I mean? To shuffle a bunch of people through and they could. Yeah, have the offices do tours. Yeah, I mean, if you see where we work now, <laughs> what's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they should be all on the streets patrolling anyway, so they Well, that's, that's a good, good thought, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, like we have a candidate for the cell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't that night. Yeah, good one. Don't get pulled over tonight, Tim. Uh, the cell is not ready. Yeah, if they're not occupied, you could actually show them to the public. You know, there's another aspect. When, when do you think the landscaping? Because it maybe would be like to really make it premier, like have the all the outside, like because there's a lot of brown dirt that surrounds the building right now. Yeah. The the landscaping season traditionally is April 15th to June 15th, April 1st, depending on when Mother Nature releases her grip of the winter. Um, you know, so barring another late March or early April snowstorm, I would say that probably by the end of April, if it's reasonably predictable weather, we could have landscaping in place and the ground set up. You won't, I mean, realistically, Chief, you won't have lawn established until probably June mm. is, is, the, is the reality of it, so. The first wave in May was <coughs> May 1st, first Wednesday. And it was coordinated with last meeting. We're gonna put up a maypole and walk in circles too. Sure, if that's what you would like. <laughs> Not on the new ground. <laughs> Good point. Um, well, I mean, I think something to keep in mind is, unlike with the middle school, high school project, we're not in a situation where we're in a third party's right. building and we have to get into an occupiable high school. Right. So we're fortunate that despite the conditions of the police department as they currently stand, you don't have to be in the new station by a drop dead date. Yeah, you know, in thinking of it, it would be nice to have all of our equipment down there, have the cruises parked mm -hmm. under the carport, have, you know, things in place that we would normally use. I also think the landscaping, if it was all done, it would tie it all things. together. You don't want to bring people and say, oh, here's a new police station, it's all dirt. Yeah. You know, you don't want to give that, Im you know, image that it wasn't really finished or. Yeah, but you know, I'm assuming they're going to have to rehydro seed that site. Um, so at least then you've got the the green look. There, there won't be, you know, turf or grass on the site, but the trees will be planted, and you know, it'll look it'll look nice. So that being said, what do you think may be appropriate? I think beginning Not of to May. Put you on the week spot. Of May. I think beginning of May. And it'll give us a little leeway too, just. If any other issues come up. Right. Mm -hmm. So with that being considered, um, would anybody like to make a motion with regard to a May 1 date for ribbon cutting for the? A second. Okay, just well, I had really clearly articulated that. Thank <laughs> you. Just a question. Uh, you know, May 1st is a Wednesday. Second. Would you prefer to do it on a weekend? Well, I'm just thinking it, it's a Wednesday, and most people are working on a Wednesday, and they won't be able to, you know, at least a, a Saturday at 10 or whatever. People can come down if they would like to. You know, you know, the public is invested in this building. They Absolutely. supported it from start to finish. So maybe May 4 at 10 o'clock? Saturday, May 4. Sir. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So if somebody wanted to second that motion as amended. Three second it. Okay. <laughs> so that discussion being considered, all those in favor of having a ribbon cutting ceremony on May 4th at 10 a.m. indicate by saying aye. 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 Any oppositions? Abstentions? Fabulous. Cannot wait. Mm. Thank you, Neil. Welcome. Uh, next item on the agenda is a finance update, and our most updated budget is dated January 31 of this year. Yep. So we just we went through with Tim uh, last week 
and updated the budget based on costs and bills that were processed through the end of January. I, th I think the good news is, is that we tie out. Um, the uh, contingency, contingency currently stands at <coughs> roughly $64,000, which I think is a good place. Um, that gets us through change order 24 most recently and forecasts everything that we know of um, currently through completion of construction. So I, barring anything unforeseen, I would say we're, we're very close to honing in on the final numbers and um, I think we're, we're still in the black, which is again, at this, late, at this late stage, I think it's a good place to be. Um, everybody else is, is just reflecting um, numbers and percentages completed on work to date uh, based on billings. So I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. Chief, any input? Uh, how are we doing yeah. with the communications budget? Yeah, that's a question. Thank I'm you. Sorry. No, I'm glad. Thank so, you. So um, we went through an exercise with, with Tim last, in the middle of last month, end of last month, um, and sort of looked at all of the costs that were going to come in from Cybercom for both the police station budget and the communications budget and sort of laid everything out and summarized it on where we were. And when we allocated everything where, at least where I thought it should land in the right pot, we were, I think we were $30,000 under the cap on the communications budget, which is not reflected in these numbers today. Okay. And in addition to that, we were about $15,000 under the communications piece of or the communications element that's inside of the police station budget moving forward. Mm -hmm. So all total, we were, we were just under $50,000 on the budget on the communications when you look at it as a whole. And that's using the 125 we got from the state? Yes. And the that's, that was the sum of, of what was originally allocated in the, in the $125,000 grant. Yeah. Excellent. Nick, did you have <coughs> any questions? That's good news. Yeah. Any questions at the table? Has any bills come in from Larry Morris for the electrical for man charge? Um, it was one. Yeah, I think. A while ago. I think so. Um, <coughs> my recollection is there was one that came in. And, and Larry comes in, you know, weekly to my office. Okay. So, you know, that's another point that we should bring up. You know, Paul Maynard worked very closely with, with Larry Morris down in Manchog, getting the conduit in, and Larry pulling the fiber through with ropes and everything else. It, it, and they did a lot more than we would expect of typical committee members. Right, um, right. So I, I appreciate that, and I know all of us appreciate the work that they did. Um, you know, virtually unpaid uh, to do that work. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. You two make a great team. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, did you have anything to add with regard to the budget process? No, not really. Um, Neil and I, like you said, uh, we're in, we're in uh, agreement. I keep a, uh, I have this master spreadsheet of everything that's been paid to date on this building project. And I turned it over to Neil prior to this meeting and he cross-checked and agreed it's working out right. I did the same thing with the communications budget. I did a separate Excellent. spreadsheet for that. Put it in there and, and then we're on the same page. <coughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for your oversight, Tim. Thank you. Much appreciated. Any other questions or comments with regard to the budget? No? Um, with regard to n any new or old business would just be the scheduling of our next meeting, which would be the first Wednesday in March, which would be the 20, no, the, what would that be, the 5th, March 5th? Um, the 6th, actually. 6th, sorry. At 7 p.m. And thank everybody for, I thank you all for being able to reschedule for this week. I know it was an inconvenience. So. I apologize as well. We had a, a conflict with the Finance Committee meeting last week. So. so unless anybody has any opposition, that will be our next meeting on March, 7 o'clock in this room. Any other new or old business? No? A talkative crowd? Uh, there appears to be no new or old business. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Abstentions? <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen.
Excuse me. Wendy, we're going to get you back up to speed.